A very good morning to you, Mike. Good morning to you, Aisha. Call me dramatic because sometimes I know I can be, and I carry an extra pair of gloves in my purse just for the very reason yesterday it happened to me. I pulled them out because I was very cold. I mean, Delaware State Police are investigating a stabbing that happened outside of a restaurant on Saturday morning in Rehoboth Beach. To put it into perspective, just how dangerous it is to use a handheld cell phone while you're driving. Staying in Cambridge, the Ironman Triathlon is coming there, but at Monday night's City Council meeting, several people voiced their concerns concerns over the running route. Well, it is the oldest known celebration commemorating the end of slavery in the U.S. And it's six o'clock. It's actually seven o'clock on Saturday, <laughs> May 10, 2014. I'm an trick. hour behind and a very good morning to you, Mike. Morning, I'm awake. Aisha. I promise I'm awake in Sussex County. The legal standing of a Georgetown man who was shot multiple times, but a police officer in his own home last August is still unknown. Spray painted profanity and vulgar images on one of Gary Hoffman's campaign signs in Stevensville were so offensive, the sheriff himself took the liberty of covering it up before our interview. It could have been somebody that I've locked up. It could have been somebody that I dealt with that wasn't happy with a law enforcement response. But the overall community is extremely satisfied with the services that we're providing. While this is not the kind of publicity he or any of the other candidates are asking for, Hoffman says. If they're doing it, they're generating support for the candidate or for the person because of the attention that they're getting with it. To many people around Queen Anne's County, Hoffman is known respectfully as the sheriff who doesn't like to be messed with. And enclosing a copy of your warrant for your arrest in your Valentine's Day greeting. But they say sometimes the nature of that status comes with a price in the form of, well, a can of spray paint. He is bound to draw some attention, whether it be positive or negative, but I still don't think that it's appropriate behavior to vandalize someone's sign. Some community businesses across from the offensive site say the act is completely uncalled for. There's two, two schools right here and their buses are going by every day and just that's I'm sure all they're looking at and you know they're just not setting the right example. That's why Hoffman says he will stop at nothing when it comes to catching whoever is behind what he calls not only a crime but also a sign of sheer disrespect. Steve, well, Exelon reps tell me as part of this deal, rates won't be going up, at least for now. And as far as jobs are concerned, long term, there may be some reductions. A lot of details still need to be ironed out before Pepco Holdings, which owns a handful of power companies, including Delmarva Power, becomes one with Chicago-based Exelon Corporation. But we asked, what kind of an impact could this have on your bill? I don't think that's something for customers to be concerned about at this point. Any company that's in business, uh, if you do make infrastructure improvements, Ultimately, that's rolled into your, your uh, rate base somewhere down the line. But some Delmarva Power customers say even if it's too early to speculate, a potential future rate increase would be equally as devastating to their pocket. Any, any kind of competition, you know, where you've got somebody else involved is going to affect your bill eventually, if not dramatically. I feel like we pay enough and I... If the rates go up, I don't even know how we're going to be able to pay it. Meanwhile, as far as an impact on workers, in a statement to WBOC, Exelon said, quote, we have committed to no involuntary merger related job reductions at the PHI utilities for two years after closing. We would expect some reductions in duplicate corporate level functions. The field personnel, the people who are out, the, the, you know, doing the, uh, the work, keeping the lights on, the linemen, people like that, probably going to be business as usual. Officials say a merger is a lengthy process that requires many agencies to sign off. But some customers say there's always anxiety with change and they feel powerless. A gig a look around Salisbury. Can you picture stumbling across community gardens like this one or even this one? That's what Salisbury City Councilman Jake Day says is the idea behind Green SBY. And our purpose right now is to get organized, link them, link their knowledge, lessons learned, resources together. Day says the city is not involved with this project. His support is completely independent. He calls this movement a push for urban agriculture to address issues of hunger, healthy eating, and gardening as a hobby. Growing 
herbs uh, and potted plants to, to growing vegetables for, uh, for significant amounts of food to uh, honeybees and, uh, and creating honey. A few spots where these gardens could sprout, the downtown, including North Camden Avenue. But some people say, well, there are good intentions behind the idea. They aren't sure if it's realistic. I think the issues in Salisbury are a lot bigger than a garden. When people are breaking into the gardens or destroying the gardens, who do you think is going to be taking care of that? It's going to be the police officers. Others are skeptical too. Areas around here need to be spruced up anyway, but they saying, well, why put that in? Why don't you put something in affordable housing for people, different stuff like that? So, you know, that's where most people's mindset is. While Green SPY continues to dig at the idea, some people say a community garden could grow on them of the campaign is to help keep the Wicomico River clean as well. But some people tell me, well, there are good intentions behind the idea. They aren't sure if this will work. Stash your trash in my bag. Okay, thank, you. thank you very much. Oh, wow. Priscilla and Tim Kino Salisbury will be saying that a lot as she hands out these bags during the festival. We want to support things beyond just cleanup days. We really would love to change behaviors of people from um, just throwing the trash on the ground to um, remembering to put it in a trash can. Timken is spearheading the new campaign introduced last year. It's an idea some city leaders like Council President Jake Day say they support. It is a, uh, a city pride issue. It is a community pride issue. Um, you know, our community ought to be proud of itself. And when we throw trash on the ground, it shows that we're not. But some people say even though it's a good idea for the time being, they aren't sure if it'll work long term. I think they're better off having more trash cans or people to kind of help out with that issue. We would like to have more responsible people. If you think of people not picking up their trash and you give them something else that could potentially be trash, Chances are they'll just pick up, they'll have whatever trash they have, put it in that plastic bag and then drop the bag and it'll be more trash. While supporters hope to keep the campaign going one plastic bag at a time, others say the idea is rubbish. Well, no city tax dollars have been spent on this campaign. However, leaders are considering adopting the slogan as its official anti-littering campaign in Salisbury.